Hey guys, Rob Field here from Field Trips. If you're new to my channel, I am traveling across the country through all 49 states I can drive to, living out of a 29 foot trailer, fishing my way through every single state. And because of that, I fish for a wide range of species. Everything from largemouth bass to rainbow trout to redfish, striper, uh, I go abroad and fish for rooster fish, tuna, you name it, if it swims, I'm trying to catch it. And so because of that, I've learned a wide range of techniques and had to use a wide variety of tackle. Rods, reels, lures. So the number one requested videos that I get asked for are my rod and reel and tackle setups on these different trips that I do. And now because I do so many different things, it would be impossible for me to go through every single thing that I use. But I decided to put together a little rundown of some basic setups that are gonna be very versatile and help you catch fish pretty much no matter where you're fishing. And it's gonna be a three part series, freshwater, inshore, and offshore. This is gonna be the freshwater entry. And so let's get started. By the way, guys, I don't know if you saw when I got out of the truck, but these are Night Eyes gear ties. This is like the new duct tape. If you are not familiar with these things, you should go buy a hundred of them. I use them for everything. They are basically heavy duty, like bread bag twist ties, but you can use them for securing anything, anywhere. In this case, I wrap one around my rods down by the reels and I wrap another one up closer to the tips. And that allows me to carry up to about a dozen, maybe even more rods with one hand. They all stay together really nice and tight. Um, I just love these things. If you look around my trailer, my truck, my boat, anywhere, I've got these things everywhere. They are perfect for lashing stuff down, securing stuff down, whatever the case may be. Night Eyes gear ties. I mean, these things have changed my life. Okay, guys, so for the past year, I've been primarily using Lama Glass rods. And so the first freshwater setup that I'm gonna to talk to you guys about is really my kind of heavier setup, kind of my workhorse. This is the Lama Glass XP705C. This is a seven foot heavier rod. It's rated from 12 to 25 pound test line. And on this, I've got the Abu Garcia Revo 4 winch. So this rod is part of the XP series from Lama Glass. They're extremely affordable. I think these retail for about $100 if I remember right. Uh, very reasonable price point. And this thing is rock solid. It's got really nice split grip, cork grips, very comfortable in your hand. It's very lightweight. It's super sensitive. And at the same time, it's got enough backbone to pull some fish at a heavier cover. So this rod is what I use for topwater frogs, uh, flipping and punching with heavier jigs. Basically, this is when I'm trying to yank bass out of some slop, out of some heavy cover, some heavy grass, thick grass, that sort of thing. And the Revo winch is the perfect reel for that. It's a lower gear ratio reel. It's a 5.4 to one. And what that means is that for every crank of the reel, you're not bringing in as much line, but it's got a lot more power. You know, if I have a bass explode on this topwater frog and some really thick slop, I've got enough power, enough backbone in the rod and enough power in the reel to really kind of work that bass out of that grass and get them up into open water. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more later, but on this, I like to run braid as my main line on pretty much all of my setups with a fluorocarbon leader. Now, the exception to that being right now, I've got this topwater frog tied on, and so I've just got straight braid running that. The topwater frog, it's sitting on top of the water, so the fish aren't gonna see your leader. It doesn't matter. And again, if you hook a six pound bass and it's got eight pounds of grass on it, I don't want any extra points of failure in my line. So I just run straight braid, but overall, this is kind of my powerhouse, my workhorse when I'm bass fishing or really any fish that I need to pull out a heavy structure. And now that may be snook around uh, bridge pilings or anything like that. This is an extra fast action rod, which means it's a much stiffer tip than some of the other ones that I'm using. And again, that stiffer tip, that extra backbone is gonna help you pull those fish out of tight cover. All right, so now we're gonna talk about a different kind of combo, something I use uh, completely differently. This right here is the Lama Glass XP 734C rod. This is seven foot three inches. So the last one I talked about was just seven foot. This is a little bit longer. It's a little bit lighter rod than that one. It's rated for 10 to 20 pound test line. And on this, I've got the Abu Garcia Revo 4 STX SHS. And what that SHS stands for is super high speed. So this one's got an eight to one gear ratio, which means that for every revolution of the handle, you're picking up a lot more line than on the winch version. And so what this is gonna be perfect for is anything where you're gonna have slack in your line 
when you get the bite. So right now on here, I've got a jerk bait tied on. We're kind of out here in winter down here in Alabama right now. And so a jerk bait is a great wintertime technique. This would also work really well for a fluke or really anything where you're gonna have slack in your line. And so when you get the bite, you need to pick up a lot of line really fast before you set the hook. And that's also a reason why having this seven foot three inch rod, having a little bit more rod is gonna be good because again, when I set the hook, I can pick up a little bit more line because I've got kind of a wider radius and a longer rod to pick up line. So that is the primary reason why I use this combo. Now at the same time, it's also gonna work great for anything that moves. So I'll throw crankbaits on this, uh, square bills, spinner baits, chatter baits, you name it. It's a really nice action rod for that. So now this is a fast action rod as opposed to the extra fast action on my kind of frogging and punching setup. So it's gonna have a little more whip in the tip, if you will, and that is gonna be great for things with multiple hooks. So you think about like a crankbait, you don't want a really stiff rod because when the fish grabs that, if your rod's too stiff, you're liable to rip that bait right out of the fish's mouth. You want something with a little more give to really let them grab it and hold on to it, and that's gonna make sure that a couple of those hooks really penetrate and get in there and you get your, get your fish on. So both of these Abu Garcia Revo reels that I've talked about are just stellar reels. They are the best bait casting reels I've ever owned. I just picked them up about a year ago. Uh, they're really out of my budget, but very much worth the investment. They have been rock solid so far. They've got extremely smooth drags, extremely smooth casting. I mean, backlashes are very, very, very rarely an issue. Now, anyone that tells you they never have backlashes is lying to you or they don't fish very much. But overall, I have been extremely stoked with how these bait casting reels have been performing. And really, I use bait casting reels for anything where I wanna make accurate casts. Because you have the ability to kind of thumb the spool, you can slow it down or stop your bait so you can kind of overcast if you need to and then stop it right where you need it to to get it right past that piece of structure or whatever you may be fishing. But overall, the Lamaglass XP series and these Abu Garcia Revos are just the perfect combination of sensitivity and at the same time, strength and backbone. All right, so now let's talk about some spinning reels. By the way, guys, where, I'm, where I've got these rods and reels right now, this is the NRS Ambush Tackle Bag. You have seen this thing if you watch my show in the back of the kayak. What I also love about this thing is it's got two handles that are easy to carry with one hand. So whether I'm in a kayak or fishing from the bank or whatever the case may be, it is perfect for getting a bunch of your tackle and three rod and reel combos down to the water no matter, no matter what you need them for. All right, so the first spinning combination I'm gonna talk about for fresh water, this is the Lama Glass, again, the XP series. This is the 702S. It's a seven foot, really light rod. It's rated for six to 10 pound test line, an eighth to a half ounce lures. I've got on here a Pen Conflict 2000. So the Pen Conflict is the lightest spinning reel that Pen makes. I pretty much exclusively fish Pen when it comes to spinning reels. And the reason for that is that they're extremely versatile and they're extremely bulletproof. So these are great reels if you fish saltwater. And because I fish saltwater and freshwater so much, it's really hard for me to have a different setup for each. And these work just as well in freshwater as they do in saltwater. And I've dumped them in the salt, I've dumped them in the sand. It doesn't matter, these things always perform great. Again, this is the lightest reel that they make. That is because of the, what they call their rigid resin RR30 body. So it's not made of metal, which is how they get it so light. So that's gonna be great for a light setup that you're gonna be casting all day. You're not gonna get that kind of wrist fatigue after a long day, eight, 10 hours on the water. It uses their HT100 carbon drag washers. The drag is silky smooth. It's really nice if a fish is running. Uh, I use this for a variety of techniques that sometimes hook bigger fish. And so you wanna make sure that you're gonna have smooth drag when you hook a fish that's really bigger than what the reel is rated for. And this pen conflict is rock solid in that capacity. It's got sealed stainless steel bearings, so it's gonna hold up great to salt, like I mentioned. And again, I use this for throwing light lures that I'm gonna be throwing all day, so I'm not wearing my wrist out. So right now I've got a really light swim bait tied on here. This is also great for weightless soft plastics or really light Texas rigs. Anything that you wanna be able to cast a little bit of distance, but that's really light. And because the rod is so light, the lighter the rod and the kind of the whippier the tip, the slower the action, the farther you're gonna be able to cast really light baits. So this is great for anything from a weightless fluke to a wacky Senko, you name it, it's gonna be great. I had a little light swim bait on here because I wanted to cast this light swim bait, something small, a really long distance and really cover some water with it. Again, this XB series is extremely affordable. I, if I remember right, it's about $100 for the 
For the rod and pen spinning reels, in my opinion, are maybe the best bang for the buck on the market. One other thing I like about pen spinning reels is again, I like to use braid as my main line. And with most spinning reels, you have to use a mono or fluoro backing because if not, the braid will slip around the spool. But the pen spinning reels feature kind of like a rubber grip around the spool. So you can go straight braid, which is gonna give you a lot more line capacity in the event that you hook a much bigger fish than you meant to on this light setup. Okay, so the last rod and reel combo that I'm gonna talk about for freshwater is another spinning setup, another light spinning setup. This is the Lamaglass PK722S. Now the PK, this is part of their Paco series, which is actually their kayak series of rods. So you'll notice down here on the bottom, there's a nice attachment point for leashes. So I always joke that with kayak fishing, it's not if you're gonna flip, it's when you're gonna flip. It happens to all of us eventually. I have found myself unexpectedly upside down. So this gives you a really nice place to attach a leash. And the nice part about that is that traditionally in the past, I've had to attach a leash you know, either on my reel seat or up here on the hook keep or somewhere where you can't actually use the rod while it's leashed. And so if you happen to flip while you're holding the rod, you're losing it anyways. But by having it down here, it's out of the way and you can actually keep the rod leashed while you're still fishing, reeling and landing your fish. Another thing I like about the Paco series is it's got a really nice carbon fiber butt. It feels really good in your hand and it actually stays really grippy even when it gets wet. It also has a nice foregrip, so if I happen to hook into a fish bigger than I expected on this light setup, I like to kind of put the, the rod butt down on my hip and I can hold onto that, that foregrip up here and really just kind of hang on and go for a ride. So on this, I've got the Pen Clash 2000. What I like about the Clash, I know I said earlier that I like the conflict, the lightest reel pen makes for these light setups, but for this setup in particular, this is my go-to for Old Faithful. So if you watch my show, you're already gonna know the answer to this, but the Wacky Senko, this is a lure that when nothing else is working, when no one's catching fish, when the bass aren't wanting to cooperate, they will always hit a Wacky Senko. That's a money back guarantee. I love this bait and the problem with it though is you have to throw it on a really light setup like this one so you can actually get some distance with it. And at the same time, big fish will eat it. So I like the pen clash because it's a full metal body. It's rock solid, very durable. So if I do happen to hook into a really big bass while fishing with this light setup, I know that it's got the power to get that fish in. I also actually love the color combination on this pen clash. The black and gold just looks killer. But back to the rod, the PK722S, this is rated for four to 10 pound line. So a really light setup. Now when they say four to 10 pound line, they mean monofilament. So I'll actually fish maybe anywhere from 10 to 20 pound braid. Right now I've got 10 pound cast king braid on here. And this is gonna be great for any lightweight setup that you may be throwing between the Wacky Senko or a weightless fluke or really light Texas rig craw, anything like that, this is gonna be perfect for. Again, I mean, we're talking about freshwater right now, but the Pen Clash is also rock solid. It's got sealed bearings. It holds up extremely well to salt, sand, and basically the elements in general. These pen reels are just bulletproof. I can't say enough about it. And really disclaimer guys, I have no affiliation with Lamaglass or Pen or Abu Garcia or any of the stuff I'm talking about today. This is just the stuff that works well for me. All right guys, so that is my quick and dirty rundown for my freshwater rods and reels and a little bit about tackle and line. Obviously, there's such a wide range of uses for this stuff. I can't go through every possibility, but these are all very well-rounded, versatile combos that you can use for a very wide variety of applications. So if you have any questions, wanna run something by me, you're trying to find a rod and reel for something specific, or if you have any questions about any of the stuff that I talked about here, or if you wanna suggest to me a rod or a reel that maybe I didn't mention that you think is great for a certain application, I would love to hear about it. I would love to answer your questions. Comment down below, I reply to every single one. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will be doing a rundown of inshore rods and reels and then offshore tackle after this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you maybe picked up some useful information. And until next time, we're gonna go get to fishing before the sun comes down.